Stand by your offering. This is where you're messing up at. Stand by your offering. So let's take a little bit of time and let's discuss offerings. Say to your neighbor, not money. And he brought him into the field of Zophim, to the top of Fisca, and built seven off altars and offered a bullock and a ram. S seven is the altar. number of what? Completion. Say it, completion. Yes, he built seven altars and offered up seven sacrifices going at the same time. The, my question to you is, does more sacrifices mean you're going to get it quicker? Or does more sacrifices mean less faith? See, more praying is not getting, what you, getting you what you need from God. People who are in relationship with God spend a little time praising and a whole lot of time in his presence. Because after we finish praying, we're waiting for an answer. And he said to Balak, stand here by your burnt offerings. While I meet, by, while I meet the Lord yonder. I hope you catch this. I hope you catch this. Don't, don't be prepared for me to do any preaching that's going to make you run up under the seats. I just want to drop something in your spirit. Uh, say to your neighbor, say, you better learn how to stand next to your offering. Say to your neighbor, stand by your offering, stand by your offering. Say it with authority, say, stand by your offering, stand by your offering. That's right, stand by your offering, stand by your offering. I'm not talking about money. Stand by your offering. If you made a sacrifice as unto the Lord, predicated upon things that the Lord has instructed you to do, and time goes to the point that what you have sacrificed, uh, the time that you have set for the blessing to take place, has not come to fruition, you have no right to walk away from it. If God spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. I was driving down the highway at about uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock, probably about 8.30, 9 o'clock in the evening, maybe not 9 yet, and the I was coming down 40, or going up 40, and um, when you looked over the top of, out of your, uh, over the top of your hood, you could see a haze over the entire highway. Uh, it was, the, the, the temperature was uh, 68, 69 degrees, fluxing between one or two points. And um, when you looked over the headlights, it was a fog, a haze over the entire city, as if you were in New York City or if you were in LA. Uh, but this haze was not due to smog. It wasn't fog or smog. It wasn't um, uh, 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 fossil fuel. It wasn't anything like that. It was pollen. Now, this amount of pollen, what they are suggesting is this, is that if the pollen is that plentiful, if the pollen is that, uh, is that intense, then the fruit this year is going to be huge, large. The harvest is going to be phenomenal. The, the fruit is going to be amongst the largest that they've seen in many, many years. Um, so the, the pollen is announcing a phenomenal harvest. So, so when I say by July, I'm not just speaking uh, to try to titillate you. When I say by July to you, it's, it's, it's accompanied by uh, what I'm seeing in nature and what I'm hearing in the spirit. Stand by your sacrifice. Lord, I offered this thing up to you. And I'm going to stand here and I'm going to work with it until I see it to fruition. I'm not backing down and I'm not giving up. I'm going to lay hold to the promise and I'm going to see the fulfillment of everything that you spoke. And anytime God is about to do something extraordinary, he allows you to go through seasons of struggles and seasons of trials. Because I don't know why he does it, but that's the way that he matures us. He has you on his mind. 
What I say? He has you on his mind. You better get in tune with your spirit. You better get in tune with what God is saying to you, that this is a season of extraordinary blessings. And as pollen is forming as smog and fog and fossil fuels, as it is clouding the air as if there's some sort of a storm or hurricane coming, so is your prosperity.